You guys have spoken. You want to see me rank more of the world's top eyewear brands. Well, today, this video is for you. I've brought out the tier list with a little bit of an adjustment. Today, we're going to be focusing purely on the best of the best. I'm going to be sorting them into four categories, ultimate being the real elite level glasses, amazing glasses that are genuinely some of the best in the world, glasses that I personally would recommend that you buy, and of course, the overrated category, taking some of the world's top tier eyewear brands and putting them back in their place. So hi, I'm Robert, style and vision consultant here at the Spectacle Factory, and it's my job to pay you with your perfect pair of glasses. And if you're looking for a perfect pair of glasses, you need to filter that down by the brands that resonate with you. Well, today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a backstory on dozens of eyewear brands, why I would or wouldn't recommend that you buy them. And of course, we're gonna be sorting them into those four categories, which is sure to be controversial. So a couple of things before we start. First of all, I'm only going to be talking about brands that I have personal experience with, that I've held in my hands, that we've worked on here at the Spectacle Factory. And secondly, of course, this is all purely my opinion. And we're going to be working in a completely random order here. So I'm just gonna pick out the brands as I see them. And with that in mind, let's go. Let's go right in the middle. Let's talk about Gast. So Gast is the least expensive brand actually in this entire tier list, but that does not mean they are low in the rankings. Definitely not. Gast are absolutely quality frames. They're made in China, which is why they're less expensive, but they're designed in Milan and the styling is very original. It's very bold. It's very typically Italian. The quality to price ratio with Gast is out of this world. They are the best value frames that you can buy. The finishing, the polishing on the acetate, it's all done to an incredibly high standard. The hinges, fantastic. That's why Gast I would rate as amazing. And if you've not heard of this brand, it's one that you should definitely check out. Let's pick out a designer brand, Chloe. You'll see within this list that generally there aren't that many designer brands. Companies that just make glasses tend to be the companies that make glasses the best. Most designer brands out there in the market are actually licensed to a third party. They don't have that much interest in either representing the brand properly or making the best quality. They're just out to make money from that license. And that's why there are very few branded frames in the world that you should even consider to buy. But Chloe is one that you definitely should. They actually make really super stylish ladies glasses and their Reace collection, their recycled acetate is actually phenomenal. Unique acetate colors, limited edition models. And I have a pair here in this beautiful purple marbled acetate, awesome shape. I mean, it's a lady shape, so it's probably not gonna look right on me, but these are like genuinely good quality acetate frames. I'm very tempted to put these in the amazing category. I definitely would buy them. I think because of this collection specifically, Chloe actually do go into amazing and they're probably the only designer brand that's gonna make it there. I guess we'll see. Let's talk about Blackfin. If you'd asked me this a year ago, Blackfin would definitely be an overrated. They make titanium frames, but I've always thought the styles were quite average. They're good because they're made from titanium, which is an excellent material, but I mean, plenty of glasses out there are made from titanium nowadays. However, in the last 12 months, I've seen a big upgrade in Blackfin frames. I've seen the styling improve. I think the quality has gone up a level as well, and you have to give them credit to that. So as of 2023, I would buy Blackfin frames. I think they're gonna go into the would buy category. How about Kubaraum? So this is a really interesting one. So Kubaraum, <laughs> They're a little bit pretentious, let's be honest. They say that they make masks, not glasses. And the idea is that when you wear a Kubrown frame, it's a change of identity for you. And I do buy into that philosophy. You know, that is fundamentally kind of how I feel about glasses is that they should showcase your character. And many of us have different characters in different situations. So having eyewear that reflects your personality in a given moment can be quite useful. And I'm also an art lover myself. I love creative things in general. Kubrown are extremely creative, but for me, just for me, they do cross that line of being not just creative, but pretentious and unwearable for the vast majority of people. You know, you've got glasses with huge spikes on them. For me, they've gone too far. Now, I love the fact that they are adventurous. I definitely get that. But are they glasses that you should buy? Well, no, because they look ridiculous. So they're going to go, they're going to go in the overrated category. And that is harsh because they're actually good glasses, but like I wouldn't recommend you buy them. So they can't go in would buy or above, obviously. Maybach. Okay, so this is gonna be really interesting to compare against Cartier because I would say those two are big rivals in that same space of Buffalo Horn, Gold, Diamonds in the case of Maybach, they really are the extravagant glasses, really extravagant. And for the right person, 
they are the right frames. I get why they appeal to a lot of people. They're the ultimate luxury glasses, in a way, a level above Cartier when it comes to actually the sheer level of luxury. But again, like Kubraum, I feel like Kubraum oversteps the mark. I personally feel that Maybach sometimes oversteps the mark and it's, again, too ostentatious, too blingy, for want of a better word. However, they are pretty special frames. I'm gonna put them in would buy just, just would buy. We'll see how Cartier fare for comparison later on. Geoffrey, my personal favorite eyewear brand. I'm wearing Geoffrey glasses right now from their Carbon Wood series. They are incredibly creative, but wearable, and that's the difference. Now, Geoffrey are not just creative in terms of shapes and colors, but in materials as well. They're the first brand to combine carbon fiber and wood together, as in the case of my frames, which I adore. I, I've said before that these are probably my favorite glasses overall. They cover so many bases, they suit so many different outfits. I just love them. This is a newer model, which is purely carbon fiber, and I love the orange accent on the bridge. You see what I mean by them being creative and different, but still very wearable. That is what Geoffrey achieved, like, in my opinion, nobody else. And I think they are the ultimate creative eyewear brand. So they have to go in the ultimate category, of course. That's a hard act to follow, but let's give it a try. Let's, let's do Etnia Barcelona. I didn't talk about them in my last tier list. I should have, I just forgot about them. Apologies. We're kind of innovative 10 years ago in the sense that they were really at the crest of the wave of people getting into more colorful, more creative glasses. And I have to give them credit for that. At the same time, I think they're very tame or they have been very tame in the past compared to brands like Fasa Fast, for example, who just do that same look, but better. Again, in the last 12 months, very much like Blackfin, I've seen a big improvement and I've been really impressed with some of the newer styles that they're coming out with. So as of this time, I would buy Etnia Barcelona and I would especially buy Lowell, which is their kind of luxury category. I'm not gonna rate them separately in this tier list video, but Lowell frames, lovely. Maikita, let's talk about Maikita and let's talk about IC Berlin because they're kind of sister companies founded by different people who used to work together. So there's a very big rivalry, both brands made in Germany, both very good quality, both in my opinion, better than Limburg, and even though Limburg are way more popular. Sadly, IC Berlin just sold out to Marklin, but maybe the quality of IC Berlin's workmanship will actually have a positive impact on Marklin, you never know. I doubt it. I see Berlin and my Kita, I'm going to put into the category of amazing because if you like minimalistic frames, they are amazing minimalistic glasses. They're probably the best in that space apart from one brand that we're going to be getting to. Walter and Herbert, okay. Walter and Herbert are a made in England brand that definitely fall in that kind of mid price point, around about $300, which in my experience is the hardest price point to find good glasses in. Saturated within that space are your Luxottica brands. Really high quality brands tend to be more like $500. So it's hard to find glasses at that kind of level that are quite different, unique, and still well made. But Walter and Herbert do achieve that. They're nothing special. I mean, I do actually, I say that. There are a couple of pieces that are special, which are their limited edition models. And these ones I 100% would buy. So this one, for example, features a custom acetate with the Walter and Herbert logo on the inside of the rim which gives a nice contrast against the black at the front. Very typical British styling with incredible titanium filigree detailed temples. Really incredible. These frames feel, out of all the frames that I've got on this table, these are one of the best to wear. So these are actually really underrated as a brand. Having said that, the collection at a whole, I wouldn't say is amazing. I would say that I would definitely buy Walter and Herbert. So they're gonna go into the would buy category. Now, Oliver Peoples, I wouldn't buy. I'm just gonna put them straight into overrated. I don't wanna hate on Luxottica too much in this video. I've done that enough on this channel already. But Oliver Peoples used to be an amazing brand. It's stagnated. I don't think the styles are anything special anymore. I don't think the quality is anything special anymore. They're definitely an overrated eyewear brand. Similarly, All Green. A lot of people ask me about All Green. I think that's because a lot of independent opticians sell All Green. I have to say any brand that made it onto this list are good quality glasses. All Green are not bad quality glasses at all, but I do think they are overrated by independent opticians. Similarly, let's, uh, let's just uh, get that overrated category fully filled up. Silhouette, massively overrated by independent opticians. Again, there was a time where they were elite level frames not anymore. And to be honest, out of all the breakages that we see in glasses that people come into our store to try and get repaired, followed by Ray-Ban, Silhouette is the most common. And whilst we're talking about Silhouette, let's talk about Flare because this is the rimless brand that I recommend instead of Silhouette, that I think are so much better. They have their own patented material called BioSteel, which is just like incredibly flexible. 
I love the screwless hinge design of their Pure Series rimless frames. I love the minimalism in general of their Pure Series. I think these are the ultimate invisible rimless glasses. If you want rimless glasses that are discreet, that almost disappear, no one does that better than Flare, including Silhouette. They're borderline ultimate because I think if you want this kind of look, they are the best in the world at that kind of look. And there are a lot of people that want this look. I'm very tempted to put them into ultimate. I'm gonna put them in amazing. Everything's made in Germany in their own workshop. Every screw, every joint is made by them. And do you know what? Flair invented rimless glasses, so that's gonna edge them into ultimate. Yeah, let's, let's put them in that category. Chrome Hearts, an interesting one. I love Chrome Hearts frames. They're a brand that has a certain level of arrogance, but maybe that arrogance is deserved because nobody is making glasses like theirs. It's hard to even describe. They're very ornate, very beautiful, just like their clothing. They're kind of over the top and they're very in your face, but they're still a very cool niche eyewear brand that a lot of people aren't even aware of. Most of their frames, if not all of them, I think potentially are made with sterling silver. And to my knowledge, they're the only eyewear brand that's making glasses in that material as well. I actually think they're, they're an ultimate eyewear brand. I think Chrome Hearts are absolutely top tier. Be interesting to contrast that against Gucci because I think if you asked, you know, a thousand people, 900 will have heard of Gucci, well, 999 will have heard of Gucci and maybe one out of a thousand might have heard of Chrome Hearts. Does that make Gucci better? No, it does not. Gucci are made by Kering, who are the company who own Gucci. So to me, that makes them more authentic because there's not a, a license agreement in place. They're not licensing it out to a third party. Gucci make good quality glasses. And if you like your fashion brands, I would buy them. So they're gonna go in the would buy category. Matsuda, well, okay, we can't talk about Matsuda in isolation. We're gonna talk about Matsuda in combination with Masanaga and Ivan because they're all made in Japan brands. They're all a very similar level of quality, all quite distinct in, in their designs, but with a lot of similarities too. To be honest, I think I'm gonna keep this simple. Rather than going too much into detail on each one, they're all three amazing Japanese eyewear brands. They're borderline ultimate, like the quality of any, if you get glasses from any of those three brands, the quality is super high. Which is the best of the three? If you were asking me to be really honest, I think Ivan is probably the best of the three, but I love the designs of Matsuda. Masanaga are kind of basic by comparison to the other two, but the quality you couldn't say is, is worse. But yeah, that's my feelings on those three brands, all three amazing Japanese eyewear brands. Gotti, okay, I, I love Gotti, uh, made in Switzerland, and very Scandinavian in the designs, but very creative, very interesting. I, I would definitely put those in the amazing category. I love their eyewear designs. I think they have their own aesthetic. There are some really cool, really cool pieces within their collection. Yeah, I think they're an amazing brand. Anna Valatan. Tempted to put them in the same category. So Anna Valatan makes some wonderful glasses in some wonderful sizes as well. Great for more petite ladies, for example. You know, I'm just thinking I've not worked on an Anna Valatan frame in the last year or so. I wonder what happened to them. I wonder why they're less popular than they used to be. But I've never been disappointed with one of their frames. I'm gonna go with Woodby. McLaren. So McLaren are phenomenal, very technical. They make some frames that are literally like nothing else in the world. For example, this was the world's first 3D printed titanium pair of glasses. And last year they brought out a limited edition version that was 3D printed titanium all the way through. This one has a separate rubber temple with their beautiful rotating hinge, by the way, it's inspired by the McLaren car doors. If you like technical design, if you like engineering, and if you like a kind of very techy look, a very sci-fi inspired look, I think these are awesome glasses. No, they're not my personal style, but for a lot of people, this is the perfect look. A really sad thing is that McLaren aren't going to be making glasses, at least for the time being, they've stopped production, so you really have to get them whilst you can. And I 100% would buy them. I would go as far as to say they're amazing and they're close to ultimate. If it was just ranking this piece, this would be ultimate level. And you know what? To be fair, for that reason, let's put them in ultimate. They've done things that are pioneering that have never been done before. You have to give them credit for that. And the quality, well, the quality is a bit like a McLaren. You're not expecting every panel to line up. You're not expecting it to not break down. But at the same time, the, something that makes you excited to have. A Kony. So we're gonna talk about Akoni and Dita together. Dita is a, it's just a brand that I personally, I don't connect with, I don't resonate with, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that their styles are very derivative of one of my favorite eyewear brands and one of the most influential eyewear brands, which is Kazal. They're on this list. So again, they're not bad glasses, but I just, just don't get the hype. For me, Dita are 
probably one of the most overrated eyewear brands that there is. Now, Dita is partially, I think now fully owned by an investment group. And therefore, some of the founders of Dita have kind of walked away, separated from the brand and founded Oconee. It's too early days to see what the kind of service levels of the brand will be. But I think I would buy a pair of Oconee frames. I can't say yet that they're amazing. I think time will tell. Their styles are still, you know, nothing groundbreaking, but their engineering is pretty cool, I have to say. I, I think I would buy a Kony. I wouldn't buy Dita. T. Henry. So I got a first look at T. Henry very recently, and you can see exactly what they're going for. They're going for the Jack Marie Marge market. They're going for those eyewear collectors who really want the best of the best with all the packaging that comes with that. Unfortunately, with both of those brands, JMM and T. Henry, you're paying a lot for the packaging. And don't be misled by the fact that both of those brands tell you that you know, they're limited edition models. I mean, they are limited edition and they're numbered, which is cool, I guess. But most luxury eyewear brands are made in limited quantities, some less than what you would get in Jack Marie Marge, for example. I was really impressed with the pure quality of T. Henry. I can't disagree with that. Are they in ultimate? I think they are in amazing. And I think they're in amazing because I would still go for Jack Marie Marge over T. Henry. And don't really ask me why, I just feel like they did it first. They're a bit more authentic in that sense. You know, that look that Jack Marie Marge have, that super thick acetate, that, you know, no expensive spared. Don't get me wrong, they're not the most comfortable glasses and they're not even like the best quality. They're not, you know, there are some brands out there that are slightly better quality than Jack Marie Marge, but obviously they're not far off, but they are authentic and they have created this amazing cult following and you have to give them huge, massive credit for that. They're definitely an ultimate eyewear brand. T. Henry in time might transition to B as well, but at the moment it feels like they're just kind of copying a little bit. That said, I don't think T. Henry are any worse quality than Jack Marie Marge. Some of the pieces I actually thought were better quality than Jack Marie Marge, so I will say that. And whilst we're talking about amazing brands, let's talk about Cartier as well. I don't think there's any doubt that Cartier could be in the ultimate category. I, I just think that is a no brainer. And here's why, so Cartier have, their own ethos that is unlike any other eyewear brand out there. They make styles that are based on their own creations that are not influenced by the market. They're not trying to be fashionable. They're not trying to be stylish, but yet somehow they are. That is very difficult to do. It's something that almost nobody has done. It's almost impossible to do the way Cartier have. Creating designs that are 40, 50 years old and still look good. Who else can do that? Maybe Cazal have done that. I'm struggling to think of any others. And the fact that they've got that tie in that inspiration from the jewelry elements makes them more authentic as well. You know, cause yes, they are a brand outside of eyewear, but I think they act like an independent eyewear brand. And I love that. So for example, you know, their Buffalo Horn, Cedar Cartier design, it's barely changed in the last 10 to 20 years. And it's still beautiful now as it was then. All their frames are gold or platinum plated. Even regardless of the fact that they are branded Cartier, they are great glasses. And probably the kings of rimless glasses. There's a reason why Cartier has such a cult following and why they have the biggest community of custom eyewear in the world. Creating a custom lens for a Cartier frame is all part of the fun. It's something we've done for hundreds, probably thousands of clients now. And you can be so creative with a Cartier frame, blending it with the right tint and shape. There's something really special in that as well, more so than again, any other eyewear brand. I think it's an absolute non-argument to, to think of Cartier as anything other than ultimate. <laughs> Taking a step down a second, Anglo-American Optical, I, I would buy. It's pretty simple. So this is another British eyewear brand. One thing I love about them are their 406, which is just a really quintessential round frame that comes with a sun clip. It's just like such an easy frame to style and wear. Comes in a ton of colors, comes in a ton of sizes. And they make a lot of other frames too. I personally wear their fits, which I, I love, and I have with a really nice custom tint. But the 406 is definitely their most iconic, most special model. And guess what? They're super affordable as well. They're kind of like $200, a little bit more with the sun clip. Again, it's a no brainer. It's something that pretty much every eyewear collector should have in their collection. I think they might be the oldest still established eyewear brand in the world. Give them massive credit for that. They're still produced in London. Yes, the materials come from China and that's why they're a little bit cheaper, but I would always buy an Anglo-American frame. I'd always recommend it. Louis Vuitton. So Louis Vuitton is a brand that outside of eyewear, I don't like and inside of eyewear I think is definitely overrated. They're good glasses and that's why they're on this list. You know, don't get me wrong, very few designer brands have made this list. Louis Vuitton are good frames, but that's it. They're not great frames, they're not anything special. I've not seen a style that I thought was interesting. Like most of Louis Vuitton, it's just all about the name. I think that's the only reason people buy Louis Vuitton in general. I don't think you could say the quality is the highest, whether that's the bags, 
or the glasses. Sorry, but I feel like that's a harsh truth that some people need to hear. Let's move on. And I've just seen a Barton Pereira domino and it looks like I might have left Barton Pereira off the list. Bear with me, I need to fix that. Here we go, you didn't see that happen. Barton Pereira are definitely amazing. Could they go in ultimate? Let's have a think. So this is the domino in green. Perfect example of Barton Pereira's classic styling. They don't do anything that's superfluous. They don't do anything that is too out there or ostentatious. Handmade in Japan, actually. The acetate frames are close to being the best of the best. Very close, actually. I'm a big fan of Barton Pereira. Things like the sculpting that's done on each frame, the sheer levels of craftsmanship, absolutely top notch. A few frames are as good. They've just been bought out by Louis Vuitton, which is really sad, for $80 million. And for what was, I thought, a fiercely independent eyewear brand, that was kind of disappointing. Their Rimless series is incredible, and I've been wearing those myself and getting a lot of um, compliments on them, which is not credit to me, that's credit to Barton Pereira. They're definitely somewhere between amazing and ultimate. I think if you want that classic look, that kind of preppy American style, no one does it better. I think, yeah, I think they go in, in ultimate because there's lots of other brands out there. We talked about, for example, Oliver Peoples, Garrett Light, let's review those. They're definitely would buy, I think. And all three of those brands do that classic eyewear style, but Barton Pereira are several levels above in terms of quality. So yeah, I think they deserve their place in the ultimate tier. Next up, Randolph Engineering. Close to ultimate, but I'm going to go with amazing. I think the quality is, is really good and definitely credit to them for being made in America. That's really nice to see. I don't think they're quite at the level of ultimate glasses, but as purely sunglasses, they're really, really good. Really good, actually. I'm tempted to put them in ultimate. They're gonna stay in amazing. And speaking of which, their big competitor, Maui Jim. And Maui Jim are going to go into amazing as well. In the last tier list, I rated them as legendary. I feel like there's just a bit too much stagnation with Maui Jim. And yes, their styles have definitely improved since the acquisition by Kering, but their lenses are no longer the best of the best. I think the Zeiss adaptive sun lenses are better than Maui Jim lenses personally. So yeah, we're gonna go with amazing for Maui Jim and Randolph Engineering, two iconic sunglass brands. Serengeti are gonna go in overrated and it's not actually because the glasses themselves are overrated, it's just because their customer service does not live up to the level that it should. In terms of actually the quality of the sunglasses themselves, 100% I would buy it and 100% I think they're top class, but I'm gonna say overrated and I don't think you should necessarily buy those. Getting close to the end here, and we've covered a lot of brands, let's talk about Porsche Design. So Porsche Design is a separate entity to Porsche, the car company. Both set up by Ferdinand Porsche, what Ferdinand Porsche did was he took some of his best engineers from the car division and put them into Porsche design where they design everyday products, whether it's umbrellas or stereos or kettles, but they also make glasses and some of their glasses designs are actually some of the most iconic of all time. This, for example, is a beautiful aviator frame. I really like the slightly wraparound effect to it. I like the angular nature of it. It's titanium, it's made in Japan. You know, that is a top tier frame. And regardless of whether it says Porsche on it, it's a cool pair of glasses. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with, it's close. I'm gonna go with would buy because they're not quite at that level of my Keter and IC Berlin, but I would buy them, definitely. Chopard are nice frames, touch overrated, but I just about would buy them if you like that really blingy style. These are, you know, very similar to Cartier in that they make lovely luxury rimless frames, but they're definitely a few tiers below Cartier in terms of quality. You know, having said that, this is just an incredible design. There are more Swarovski crystals in this frame than I can actually count. Gold-plated, rimless, interesting style, cool shape. For the right lady, Chopard are nice, and they actually do make nice men's frames as well. Yeah, I would buy Chopard, but I wouldn't necessarily say they are fantastic. And another one I can't believe I've forgotten, Robert LaRoche, are a famous, well, they're probably not famous anymore, but they're a legendary historic eyewear brand from Austria. Everything is handmade in Italy. And whilst Italy is definitely not on the level of Japan when it comes to manufacturing eyewear in general, Robert LaRoche are the best that I've seen made in Italy. They feature lovely sculpting on their acetate frames, but in this case, I've actually picked out a titanium frame because Robert LaRoche is probably the brand that does acetate and titanium pieces equally at a phenomenal level. They're very simplistic, like there's no embellishments, there's nothing that 
makes them particularly ornate, but they are just super high quality, like some of the best quality frames in the world. This frame, which is the Jasper, is so smooth and effortless to wear. It's not weightless, but it's close to weightless and they feel just very reassuringly premium. This is a pure titanium frame and the titanium pieces actually are made in Japan, which says a lot. Very close to putting Robert LaRoche in the ultimate tier, but they're just going to fall short. They're just going to go into amazing. They're actually one of my most recommended brands. For me, the quality is very close to Jack Marie Marge as kind of a barometer. Next up, Tom Brown, and equally, I think, amazing. Super luxurious glasses, cool brand. I like Tom Brown a lot. There's not really much more to be said. I think the styles maybe are a little bit lackluster in that they're very safe compared to the rest of the Tom Brown brand, but they're certainly amazing glasses. Actually, they're gonna drop down into wood buy because like I said, the styles are not particularly great. Kazal almost make it into ultimate, but are going to go into amazing. And the reason for that is because the quality is not super high, sadly. Um, I do love some of the pieces and this one is extremely high quality. This is the new aluminium iteration of the famous 607, which is basically the style that launched Kazal as a brand. One of the most influential eyewear brands in history. The brand that is probably solely responsible for making glasses a fashion accessory. They were huge in the hip hop and rap scene of the 80s. They're still huge in that scene now. The new aluminium frames are great. Quality is not top tier but the brand itself is. We're gonna go with Amazing, and it's very close to Ultimate. In fact, I feel like I'm second guessing myself too much here, but Kazal, because of the styling, because of the absolute iconic and legendary styling, they are going to go into the Ultimate tier. Because if you want that look, that big, bold look, Kazal, for me, is the brand to get. RLM, definitely amazing. Quality is lovely. Uh, the finishing on the metal pieces in particular is, is absolutely fabulous. I have an example here. This is one of their models with a sun clip. The Plas Dauphine. I love the sun clip. It's a beautiful interpretation of a sun clip and particularly because of the fact that it folds in half. So it's very easy to keep in your pocket. But you can just see the shaping of this frame, super unique. Titanium pads with engraving on, metal temples with engraving on again. Beautiful. The, the looped end tips is something I've not seen done before. Arlem, who is the designer of her brand, Arlem, is a multi-award winning designer and you can see why. Their frames are some of the most stylish in the world. Superb quality, made in France. I absolutely love RLM. It's still a relatively new brand. I don't think they quite go into the ultimate tier, but they're not far off. Definitely amazing, no question. Blake Kuahawa, I would buy them. I don't think they're all that. I don't personally love their styles, but they are cool glasses, well made. Luna, the same. I would buy them, but I think there is better. They're a good price point, good quality. Nothing bad to say about Luna, just nothing particularly special for me. Lindbergh is one of my most controversial brands. Uh, definitely for me, 10 years ago, were an amazing eyewear brand. They are, at the time, 10 years ago, they were kind of the pinnacle of minimalistic eyewear, making incredible quality frames designed in Denmark, but not anymore. They've stagnated over the last 10 years. They're now acquired by Kering. I've not seen anything new or interesting from Lindbergh in what seems like forever. Definitely an overrated eyewear brand. If you like that style, get Maikita, get IT Berlin, or get Reykjavik Eyes, and let's, let's talk about Reykjavik Eyes. So Reykjavik Eyes are definitely ultimate tier. They are the most comfortable and the strongest classes, in my opinion, in the world. Each frame is laser cut from one piece of titanium, and it's beta titanium, which is the same material they use in aircraft. Incredible quality titanium frames. They have their own annealing process for the paintwork, so they almost never chip, which is really unusual with titanium. That's something that you'll find with like Ivan, for example, the paintwork can chip off, not with Reykjavik eyes, and a lot of brands want to know their secret for applying that paint. For me, these frames just feel like you're not wearing glasses and you never have to worry about breaking them. There are no screws, there are no solders, there are no welds. There are just no weak points to them. They have their own patented hinge design, inspired by Iceland and designed by Gunnar Gunnarsson, who for me is a genius. He took the concept of glasses and wanted to reinvent the idea of what a frame can be. He did that and for me they are probably overall like the best glasses in the world on a functional level. Obviously the style is not for everyone. This is one of their newer pieces, the Laris, which is a much thicker cut of titanium than Reykjavik eyes usually make. And this one is definitely more stylish and I like the fact that they are still innovating. But I wouldn't say they're the most stylish, but in every other category they are the best. So Reykjavik eyes is like the ultimate frame for me, the ultimate eyewear brand. Moscot. Last year, I referred to them as ultimate as well, well, legendary in, in that tier list video. Now I only would buy them. And the reason is because whilst their styles are iconic, 
the quality, most of their manufacturing is now done in China. And there's been a big drop off. The quality levels for me are not even as high as gas, which are also made in China and they're like half the price. So for me, I would buy them because of the history, but there is better that you can get. Portrait, I would say the same. So Portrait are a really interesting brand. They make some very unusual and very cool glasses designs, like this one, for example, which is the, the Robert, named after me, of course, I wish. But the Robert is a very typical example of Portrait. They're super creative frames, made in Italy, lovely acetates, not the most comfortable, not the best finish, but, but certainly well finished, very artistic and inspired by the art world. Each frame is based on a painting or an art aesthetic and you can really see that come through. I, I really appreciate the creativity in Portrait. I don't think they're amazing quality, but I definitely would buy them 100%. And if you want something a bit different, I would really actually strongly recommend them. Teo is a brand that, again, I feel like has stagnated for me. I still would buy them. I, again, five years ago, super creative. I think a lot of other brands have caught up with them and I now think that their aesthetic is more mainstream, which is probably not their fault. I mean, they're kind of the pioneers of that really quirky glasses look. You've got to give them credit for that. They're close to amazing, but I just would buy. I think the brands that are above them deserve to be above them. So yeah, Teo would buy them. I like them. I would recommend them, but not for me. We're getting close to the end. Let's talk about LEI Works. So this is a big statement, a really big statement coming up. So I hope you're prepared. LEI Works for me make the best acetate frames in the world. The best. Handmade in Japan, super well polished, super beautiful colorations. I mean, look at this. This is just wow. It's wow, isn't it? It's so luxurious. And in the last 12 months to two years, they've really stepped up their production. It's getting better than ever before. Each frame is impeccable, flawless. The best acetate frames for me. LA Eyeworks, 10 out of 10. And definitely an ultimate eyewear brand. Next up, Fasafas. I just about would buy them. Now, the reason why I've stopped talking about Fasafas as much as I used to is simply because they seem to have a very poor attitude towards customer service. We found with a couple of warranty issues that they weren't taking responsibility and that does not sit right with me. But the frames themselves are lovely, beautiful, and I would definitely recommend to buy them as long as you understand what I've just said. The Bokka series is the one that they're best known for with the little heels at the end. A really cute touch if you're a lady um, or if you're a guy with that kind of personality. Really nice acetate frames, not again necessarily the best quality, but all made in either France or Italy. Yeah, nice frames, I would buy them. And finally, Luca Distel. I didn't mean to leave these until last, but you could arguably say I have left the best till last. Earlier in the year, I took you on a tour of the Luca Distel workshop where you can see how these glasses are literally made by hand from start to finish. And Luca Distel are the only company making their glasses in this way, from purely natural materials, whether it's wood or whether it's leather in this case, all of their frames contain purely natural materials. How amazing is that, first of all? To make glasses unlike anybody else, not just in the aesthetic, but in the whole manufacturing process, in a true artisan way, a true hands-on approach where Luca is actually physically making most of your glasses. He's a super humble guy. He makes beautiful frames that feel unlike anything else. These leather frames, they're so soft on the skin. They're lightweight, they're flexible, they're durable. Yes, they will pick up patina over time, but that's part of the beauty of them, part of the natural beauty. I love Luca Distel and I can't stop talking about them. And you guys love them too. We've taken so many orders for Luca Distel this year. And it's just nice to share the love of something that on a pure fundamental level does have a lot of love put into it. Luca Distel, absolutely ultimate. Maybe the most ultimate glasses, but do you know what? They're ultimate for you. They're not flamboyant frames. They're not, well, you can't actually expect them to be flamboyant. You can customize them with any color you like. You can go for a bright pink stingray leather if you want to be flamboyant. But the point is that these glasses don't necessarily look as expensive as they are. And that does put some people off because some people want to show everyone that they've got money. These are for people who are comfortable enough in themselves that they don't need to show off. They just want to look classy. They just want to feel special in their glasses. And for me, Luca Distel are the pinnacle of that. Probably my very ultimate eyewear brand. And that's it, 50, 5 zero, 50 of the world's top eyewear brands. I would say that is probably the 50 top eyewear brands in the world, all ranked according to their individual tiers. What do you think? Do you agree with my opinions? Or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. I really wanna hear your thoughts. And if there are any brands that I didn't cover today, ask about them and I'll be happy to give my opinion. But for now, this has been a long video. I've really enjoyed making it. It's been really cool to talk about all of these incredible eyewear brands. And I hope you learned something. If you have, give us a like, subscribe to the channel for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. I've got so much coming for you for the rest of the year and beyond. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys.
，拜拜。